Welcome to the second lesson. So in this one we are going to see a couple more objects and we are going to talk about how the flow of data works in Max. So how do actually objects communicate through those cables? So first of all, let's take a look at another object that we got here inside the top toolbar. So I have the patch unlocked. As you can see, my lock here is open, which means that I can create objects. So I will go up here. I will skip these first two objects for the moment. We will just go to the third icon, which is comment. I click and drag it in my patch. And this, as you can see, is the exact same object that I've been using in the previous lesson. It's actually just a container for some text, which I've been using to put inside the shortcuts and some notes. So exactly, this object is called comment, and it's actually just to write notes inside. And it can be created also using a shortcut, and a shortcut is C. So if I click inside my patch with the patch unlocked, and I press C on my keyboard, you can see that this object appears. So we can also create objects using uh, shortcuts from our keyboard. Only some objects are mapped to some shortcuts and comment is one of those. Now, as you can see, I can resize this object to, uh, when I'm in edit mode by clicking on it and clicking on its corners. But if I wanted to match exactly the length of my text, I can click on it press command J or control J and it will resize automatically. So command or control plus J, it means resize object. And this works for all the objects, but it's especially useful for comments. So for example, if I have just a, a letter here and I want to resize this object exactly to this uh, length, I could do it manually, but I can also just click on the object, click control J and it will resize automatically. So that's pretty neat. Now, there is also another object that I want to show you, which is the fourth ear, the fourth icon ear, which is called Toggle. So I just click on it, I drag it inside the patch, and this funny looking guy appears. So I lock now the patch with the command E, so as you can see my lock is closed. I click on this object, and as you can see, it's doing something, like it's getting from dark to bright, it's kind of illuminating. And this object, in fact, works exactly like a switch, which means uh, it's used to put objects on and off. It's really like a switch, but what does it do exactly? Well, we can try to connect this to one of our number boxes, then click again on it, and nothing really happens. If I click on it again, we can see that the number inside this number box is changed to 1. So if I hover with my mouse on this cable, we can see that it shows us a one, which is the last number that this object output. If I click again on the toggle, so with the patch locked, which means I can actually use my objects, uh, it gives us a zero. You can see also if we hover with the mouse. So actually what this object does is to output a one and a, or a zero every time it's clicked. So if I click it and it becomes bright, it's outputting a one. And if I click it again and it becomes dark, it's outputting a zero. So what is actually going on here? Well, as you probably guessed, the number is coming out from the toggle object. And let's actually write his name here. So this is called toggle. Is going down to this integer number box, and that's by the way an integer number box, which means it can only give us integer numbers. So integer number box, so numbers without the comma, so only wall numbers. So the number from the toggle is going down to the integer number box through the cable, and it's going to the input of the integer number box, and it's setting its internal value, so this number one, which is also displayed. Then the same number is being output from this middle integer number box and it's going down to the number box on the bottom. So the value is traveling all the way from the toggle to this bottom number box. And if we would add another number box, oh, and that's interesting, I copied it by simply clicking on the object, then pressing Alt and dragging it in order to create a clone of these objects. So let's write this down. So if you click on an object and then you press Alt and drag, you are clone the object. And, but of course the, match, the patch must be unlocked for this to work. So let's do it again. Let's copy this integer number box. And as you can see, when I clone it, 
it's actually initialized from scratch. So it's not copying the internal value of this object. It's simply being created a new object from scratch, which has the default value of zero inside. So if I connect this under the last integer number box, and I click again on the toggle, you can see that all the number boxes get updated with one. This means the signal travels all the way from the top to the bottom. And that's a property of max data flow. The data always flows from the top to the bottom, so from input to output, until it reaches the last object in the chain. And also inputs in max are called actually inlets and outputs are called outlets. So these little circles in the objects that you see, these are called inlets and outlets. So let's write this down. So the inlets are the object inputs and the outlets are the object outputs in max parlance. So you can add as many objects as you want. When you modify the first one in the chain, they all going to be modified as well until they reach the end of the chain. But uh, also, if an object will be below the other objects, but still connected to the input of another object, it would also still fill the whole chain of objects. So it's not really correct to say that the signal always, go for, always goes from top to bottom. It's more correct to say that the signal always goes from outlet to inlet. And it always arrives at the end of the chain of all the objects. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. One last thing that I want to tell you is that as we created the, the comment just by pressing C, we can actually create the toggle also just by pressing T. So if I press T, I can create a toggle object. All right, so we start to introduce a couple of shortcuts. And to create an integer number box, I can actually press I. So if I press I, I can create one of those integer number box, the same ones that we had created before by dragging them here from the top toolbar. So let's make a little recap. In this lesson, we introduced uh, the object comment, the toggle object. We said how we can copy and uh, clone objects with the alt and drag. We saw the shortcuts for the toggle and the integer number box. And most important of all, we saw how the data flows from outlets to inlets in max until it arrives to the end of the chain of objects involved. Okay, great. Well done so far in your trip into Max and uh, see you in the next lesson where we are going to see some more objects and some more properties of a Max.